Hi, it's John here, and Bing's Academy is all about teaching students how to reach their goals. The reason why we do one-on-one -on -one tutoring is because we recognize that every student is different and, accordingly, they have different goals. The way that they prefer to learn, the upbringing and communication style, and the motivations will all play a factor in determining this. When you add in a sprinkle of the different ages of students and the ever-changing syllabus and education system here in Australia, it can be very difficult and confusing. That is why in today's video, I will go through three of the most common things that could be preventing you from reaching your academic goal. Whether it's getting an A in your school report, a high NAPLAN report, getting into a great selective high school, or doing well in the HSC, this can apply to all of them. Let's get into it. In case you are new to this channel, I attended Penrith High School and transferred into Girroween High School. I graduated high school in 2014 and ever since then I have continued teaching students as it has become one of my passions. I'm going to assume that if you're having trouble reaching a goal, then the goal that you have in the first place is already a good one. Not all goals are equal. If your goal is very abstract, and not clear, you would really struggle and be unsure on whether you have completed it or if you have completed it. Something like reading more books or getting good in English are way too abstract and too broad and it's going to be very difficult to see whether you'll be able to achieve it. Although instead of getting good in English, we make it getting an 85 or higher in my next English assessment task in school, it is going to be much better as it's time bound and there's going to be very specific information here telling you if you've achieved it, which is getting 85 or higher. I'm going to assume that you already know how to create a good goal and how that's different to a bad goal, but if you wanted me to create an entire video on goal setting in terms of students and in terms of the academic situation, then just let me know and I'll be more than happy to make a video on that. Proper goal setting is crucial. I will go through three key blockers that I see most frequently preventing students reaching their academic goals. The first blocker is not having a plan or having a plan in place, but being too rigid about it. This begins with having an achievable and realistic goal. If a student does not have a clear, rational, and actionable plan to reach it, it is not going to work at all. As you are progressing through your work and time is passing, it is going to be very difficult to see if you are even on the right track if you don't have a plan. When there is an obstacle or a milestone that is not reached, if there's no plan, you'll be lost in terms of knowing what to do and how to react. Alternatively, if you have a plan that is way too fixed and you are not flexible with it, then it's generally not going to work out either. An example here is the New South Wales Selective Exam, which could be uh, your goal, making it into one of these schools. If your plan is to spend an equal amount of time in each of the different subjects, in reading, mathematical reasoning, thinking skills, and writing each week, then that could be a very logical plan. Although, if you're doing selective trial tests in preparation for this exam, and you are clearly weaker in one area like writing compared to the rest of the subject matter, then continuing with your plan on spending an equal amount of time in every subject might not be that smart. That is why if you are a little bit more flexible with it and not too rigid, then you might actually benefit a lot more from it. Instead, the plan should be modified so you can maybe spend more time on the subject that you are weaker in in this case being writing compared to the other subjects then you're already a bit stronger in. The best students have a good plan but the students that are above them are also flexible with those plans where they can adjust it if it makes sense. You don't want to be changing the plan for no reason though, just because you don't feel like it or you find that area of study boring. Those are not valid reasons to adjust the plan, but if it's showing consistently in your trial test scores that you're performing weaker in one area, it's a bit of a no-brainer that you have to spend more time on that area. The second blocker is consistency for the student. Most plans and goals will require work that is repeated and sustained over a period of time. It is also one of the C's in the CSS framework, which is one of my most popular videos in case you planned on making it into an OC or selective school. This is critical because any student can work hard for one or two months. 
It doesn't matter how naughty or how behind you are. I've seen the most challenged and behind students have the ability to work hard for at least two months if they get the right support. But it is a different story if your goal is quite ambitious and require a longer time horizon than just two months. Let's say that you are in year seven, but you want to transfer into a selective high school because you were not successful when you were in year six. The vast majority of schools will require two to three sets of reports. And with each report being half a year's worth of your test scores, that means they'll be evaluating students' achievements, marks, reports, extracurricular activities across a one and a half year times window. Students can work hard for a month or two, like I said, quite easily, but not every student can work hard for a year and a half. If they have extended breaks in between this period, it can lower the momentum and you may not have the application required to actually transfer successfully. Can you still make it into your dream school even if one report is not as good? Of course you can, but will it be more difficult? Yes, it will. Motivation and reminders from parents, teachers, and tutors can help short term for a month or two, like I mentioned. But if the students does not internalize the goal, follow a plan, and is not consistent with their own work themselves, it generally won't last. It's just going to be something motivational. But if they internalize it and they're consistent with it, it's going to be a lot more beneficial. Homework can be rushed. Students will not study properly as they are distracted, and the list goes on if it's only up to the teacher and the parents to remind the student and the student doesn't want to do that themselves. That is why for every student we teach personally at Bing's Academy, I tell the parents to always have a chat with the student before we even start with them. There's no point if we want to help them or if the parent really wants to help them, if the student is not willing to put in that work and be consistent about that, then it will just not work out in the long term. The third and last blocker that I want to mention that's preventing students from reaching their academic goals is the resources that they are actually using and have access to. In the past two weeks, I've spoken to parents who are preparing for the scholarship exam next year, give them talented exams and the selective exam, and with the test coming around in just a few months' time, I know that it's going to be quite significant. When I asked how they have prepared, and I've spoken to these parents, they've purchased random books with selective on the cover or what their friends have recommended years ago. But as you may have noticed, especially if you've been following this channel, the selective exam has undergone a very drastic change from previous years last year. So that means a lot of books that have existed have become redundant, outdated, and it's also the reason why they're always on sale. Depending on the test or the goal, the format of the questions can be vastly different. Having exposure to the way questions are set out and doing the right practice questions accordingly will benefit students, but practicing and using the wrong resources can actually be damaging. The same can be applied with practice material and the tutor you use. If the practice material is written incorrectly, or if the tutor does not have the right knowledge to help the student with their specific goal, it may help indirectly, but it's not gonna be helping as much compared to a tutor uh, who actually knows their stuff or if the materials were a lot more relevant. An example of the tutor being a potential blocker can be seen quite evidently with the advice sheet format, which is the New South Wales Selective Sample Paper. I've made a video about that uh, early last year on this text type and this question on what is being asked. I know a bunch of other tutors and organizations have done the exact same thing. While my interpretation is quite similar in many regards, there are some distinct differences that I think is required for this text type compared to what they say. So if I say that an advice sheet needs subheadings, but someone else says it doesn't, then what's going to happen? The student might follow their advice, they might follow my advice, so one of them is going to be correct and one of them is not going to be correct. And obviously you want to make sure you're following the right information, otherwise you're going to lose marks. In terms of addressing and managing these blockers to achieve your goal, you will need to manage your expectations and have the right mindset. If you have a plan that is very different to the way you typically study for an exam, it might not work very well because you're not used to it. Being consistent does not mean you can't play any games, hang out with friends, watch TV, or anything like that. Going cold turkey by avoiding and cutting out all these activities will likely do more harm than good. Instead, you can reduce and replace these activities and be more flexible with your approach. 
This is the same way that people tell and doctors tell people who smoke cigarettes. If I smoke a pack of cigarettes every single day, but you instantly tell me to stop it completely, as you know that I'm trying to prevent myself to actually smoke, I'm going to have a lot of withdrawal symptoms and there's going to be a lot of friction and pushback. Just because I'm so used to smoking maybe 10 cigarettes a day, if I go to zero immediately, it's going to be very tough. But instead of, if I usually smoke 10 cigarettes a day, I might go to five, then three, then one, then none, over a period of time, it's going to be a lot more easier. And this principle can also be applied here for studying as well. So I wouldn't say if you're used to studying or used to playing games for three hours a day, but you instantly don't play any games at all, it's going to be a bit of a shock long term. For a month or two, like I said, it's going to be fine if the parents, teacher always reminds you, but long term, it's, it's going to be a bit difficult. So wean yourself off if you have pretty bad habits, but you want to try to be as consistent as possible and try to replace these activities with more productive ones that actually help you with your goal. Although, I think it's important that you should not compromise on your goals as well. That is the one thing that you should not be flexible with. Just because your parent might want something, maybe they want you to get into James Ruiz High School, or if you know that you have to put in a lot of effort, then there's not much point in making that your goal if that's not something you really want yourself. Make sure it is something that you really want to achieve, and it will be a lot easier to actually know if you are in the right direction and you're going to achieve it in the end place. If it's someone else's goal and someone else's dream, you're not going to be able to put in the amount of work that is required for it. In conclusion, every student has different academic goals and they all learn differently. I have made the assumption in this video already that you already know how to set realistic academic goals and went through the three key blockers that I see commonly that have a big effect on students that are preventing them from reaching these goals. That is not having a plan, being very inflexible with it, not being consistent with it, and having low quality resources available. Make sure to like and subscribe this video if you haven't already. I also got a haircut earlier today, so if you see strands of hair, if you zoom in uh, on my face, then that's the reason for that. I have a shower that I have planned after this, but I definitely wanted to get this video out just because I've been so busy and I definitely want to uh, provide some value. But definitely share this video. If you haven't, comment down below. Let me know uh, what you like, didn't like, or if you want to see any videos in particular. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.